What if I told you that there exists a thought experiment so terrible and so mind-blowing that it puts you in an existential crisis simply by knowing about it? A thought experiment that often gets referred to as the scariest thought experiment. Today we'll not only discuss this, but also a bunch of other thought-provoking and even disturbing thought experiments, paradoxes and theories. Welcome to the second part of the thought experiment at Paradox Iceberg. In this video I'll explain the concepts present in level 4 to 6. If you haven't watched the first part yet, you can watch it here, but you can also enjoy this video without having watched the first part. These videos take a long time to make, so I would really appreciate if you'd subscribe to the channel and share the video. Okay, Ford Experiment Iceberg Part 2. Are you ready? Fasten your seatbelts. We're starting right now. You know how in Rick and Morty there exists an infinite amount of parallel universes? That's called a multiverse and that sums up the entire theory. In our universe we're not sure if they exist or not and if their discovery would mess with our laws of physics. But yeah, that's basically it. The parallel universes wouldn't be the same as ours, there would always be a slight difference. So there must be a universe where I'm actually a legit good YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. You're taking a walk through a swamp, don't ask me why, and oh no, there's a lightning and it hits you and, well, you die. But the good news is that a second lightning hits the swamp and alters the molecules in the air to create an identical version of yourself. It looks the same, it acts the same and it has the same memories. But is it actually you? Well, probably not. It would be able to recognize your friends and family, but it actually meets them for the first time, so it doesn't really recognize them. It has no causal history, it's a new being, and it knows to talk, but it never learned to do so. So everything it says is meaningless to itself. Okay, this is a good one. A man drops off a baby girl at an orphanage. The people working there have no idea where she came from, and so they called her Jane. She grows up there having no clue who her real parents are. And one day she gets her first boyfriend and surprise, she's pregnant. She tells her boyfriend and he is so happy that he immediately headed out to buy cigarettes. Nine months later she rushes to the hospital where she gives birth to her daughter. But someone breaks in the hospital room and kidnaps the baby. And if that wasn't already bad enough, she's dying. The doctor explains, Jane, you're dying. And the only way we can save you is if we switch your gender and... Wait, is that actually written in the script? Oh, I guess it is. <clears throat> so Jane gets transformed to Jim. With the time, Jim becomes miserable, not knowing who he is. One day he decides to become drunk at the bar. The bartender comes up to him and he's like, Yo, I'm not really a bartender, I'm actually a time traveler. Wanna go back in time and find out who your parents were? And he's like, Uh, yeah, sure. And so they travel back in time and Jim is filled with motivation to find his parents with his newly made friend and he's gone. Stuck in an unknown time period, he meets a beautiful girl. They fall in love and surprise, she's pregnant. And he's like, oh damn, I better buy a pack of cigarettes and never return. So he does that, but then he realizes, wait, I lost my first chance of bringing up my child. I shouldn't waste a second chance. And he breaks into the hospital where his newly born daughter stays and kidnaps her. He goes back to the time machine and travels even further back in time, only to realize that his daughter is really annoying, so he drops her off at an orphanage. Right next to the orphanage is the time travel police, who prevent terrible events by going in the past and changing the course of history. So, since Jim had nothing better to do, he joined them and lived a long life. One day he retires and becomes a bartender and decides to help a young guy out who clearly experiences an existential crisis in his bar. And I think you get the idea. Jim is his own mother, father and daughter. What kind of drugs do I have to take to get ideas like this? Last Thursdayism is the idea that the universe got created last Thursday, including your memories of the time before last Thursday. 
After this belief, it could be possible that the universe got created last Thursday and could even expire next Thursday and you'd had no idea. Mary is a scientist. More precisely, she's a color scientist. She knows every scientific fact there is to know about colors, why they exist, how we perceive them and more. But although Mary knows everything about colors, she never perceived them. From the day of her birth, she lived in a black and white room where she learned everything about colors. Until one day where she gets released to the real world and experiences the beauty of colors for the first time in her life. Remember, she knew everything there is to know about colors. But it could be possible that she would nonetheless learn something new. Something that can't be put into words. Something that can only be experienced. Congrats! You built the first humanoid robot that moves exactly like a human and has extremely fast reflexes. But unfortunately, you didn't pay attention during AI programming class, so the robot isn't as smart as you wished it to be. So you built in a stop button in case anything goes wrong. To test it, you ask the robot to make a cup of coffee. The AI has now a new task and it does everything to complete the task, because every time it completes a task, it gets reward points. So the robot gets to the kitchen to make you a coffee. But your baby is in its way. Since the robot wants to complete the task as efficient as possible, it decides to walk over the baby since it's faster than going around it. I assume you don't want your baby to be crushed, so you head over to push the stop button. But since the robot can't complete the task when it's deactivated, it fights you off to protect the button so it can complete the task. So does that mean that integrating a stop button on a robot is unnecessary, since it can't be pressed anyway? You could say that you simply program the robot in a way that it lets you press the button, no matter the circumstances. But like a lot of programming things, it isn't that easy. The goal of this theory is to solve common problems in quantum physics like Schrodinger's cat. Physicists can't explain how a particle goes from being in a combination of two states at once to just one or the other. That's where the many worlds interpretation comes into play. After this theory, every time a decision is made, the universe splits into two. Let's say you have to make the decision to either drink tea or coffee. In one universe you choose the tea and in the other one you choose the coffee. This means that there might exist an unthinkable amount of parallel universes and the number is growing constantly. How does consciousness work? Well, nobody knows. To this day, we still have no scientific explanation why we are self-aware. We are all just matter. The brain is just meat. But why can this piece of meat be conscious, but a chicken nugget can't? According to some dude, your brain might work like a quantum computer. So consciousness might originate from the quantum level inside the neurons and not, like many people believe, from the connections between the neurons. In part 1 we learned that a quantum object is an object that can be in two different states or in two different places at once. Consciousness might originate from this phenomenon. Of course that's just a theory, but it's a pretty appealing one since, you know, consciousness can't be explained yet. But I think it's pretty cool. Okay, forget everything I just said. Here's a completely different theory that tries to explain consciousness and not only that, it tries to measure it. According to this theory, consciousness arises when there is enough integrated information. Let me illustrate what I mean with an example. You're standing in front of a computer screen that turns on every few seconds and then turns off again. Next to you, there's a sensor that can measure if the screen is turned on or off, based on its brightness. Next to this sensor is another sensor that can identify what color is shown on the screen. When the screen turns on, sensor 1 notices and produces one bit information. Sensor 2 doesn't know that the screen turned on. It doesn't even know that there is a screen. It just knows that the color it saw changed from black to white and produces one bit information. You, on the other hand, can not only see if the screen turns on or off or what color the screen shows, you can differentiate this experience from tons of other stuff. Is there sound? Does the screen show a video or an image? And countless other information that you perceive and which your brain transforms into an experience. This theory proposes an equation that determines how conscious something is. Applied to the human brain, it gives a number noted as phi. If you would connect the two sensors with each other, they would be able to perceive more information and therefore become more conscious. 
Your brain contains thousands of neurons all interconnected with each other, which makes you super conscious. So, according to this theory, the more interconnected the system is, the more conscious it is. Let's take a look at the math behind this theory. Okay, let's not do that. But I think it's such an interesting topic. And a complicated one too. It's fascinating to think about consciousness as a spectrum and not as a you're either conscious or you're not thing. Still remember the many worlds interpretation? Good, we're gonna need it for this theory. Have you ever dreamed to be immortal? Well then listen closely, because there is a small chance that you might be. Assuming that the many worlds interpretation is true, you participate in an experiment that should prove your immortality. You are put in a room with a bomb. Every few seconds there is a 50% chance that the bomb will explode and kill you. And a 50% chance that the bomb will not explode and you will survive. So, it's truly random if the bomb goes off. If the bomb doesn't explode after 9 seconds, there's a 12.5% chance that the bomb not going off was random. After 300 seconds, there is only an 800 octillion of a percent chance that the bomb not going off was random. At this point we can conclude with certainty that you're indeed immortal. But why is that? Every few seconds the universe splits into two and creates a parallel universe where the bomb goes off and you die. So why aren't you in the universe where you died? Because that you doesn't know that he died. Only a life you knows that he survived. Every few seconds the same thing happens and only the living you can keep being conscious. Only living you can realize that he didn't die. What if your whole life is a lie? Nothing but ones and zeros. A computer simulation. Like the Matrix. No way you think? Well. Think about it. Technology is constantly getting better and better. Scientists think that technology is processing faster and faster every year. And so it is for video games, computer and AI. Today we have stunning looking graphics, while 50 years ago video games looked like this. Same with AI. We have Siri and Alexa who are able to have human-like conversations. And while these AIs are flawed, one day we won't be able to distinguish them from humans anymore. And with the constant growth of computer power, it could in fact be very possible that you're already living in such a simulation created by a higher life form. Maybe you are an AI yourself, an AI so complex that it is capable of being conscious. Who knows? To be honest, I'm not sure why this is so far at the bottom. Probably because it's not that popular of a theory. But it basically states that any goal is compatible with any level of intelligence. That means that just because an AI is programmed to sort pens after their color doesn't mean it's stupid. And just because an AI is programmed to predict the stock value of a company doesn't mean it's smart. Intelligence simply refers to how the AI manages to complete its task. If it's smart, it finds ways to easily complete the task in the most effective way. Okay, finally we arrived at the bottom of the iceberg. We now arrived at the most terrifying and dangerous thought experiment. But before I start talking about it, I'll put a warning out first. Why did you think that it says do not research right next to Roku's basilisk on the iceberg? Putting this warning next to the things on the bottom of the iceberg is kind of a meme among the iceberg chart community. But this time it isn't for the memes. This time it actually makes sense to put this warning next to the concept. Because Roku's Basilisk is probably the closest thing to a real-life info hazard that we have. A piece of information that puts you in danger simply by knowing about it. So I'll say this, if you're mentally unstable or fear to fall into an existential crisis, do not continue watching. For the rest of you, let's start at the beginning. A few years ago, a user called Roko posted a thought experiment on the philosophy forum Less Wrong. Shortly after, the post got deleted from the founder of the website, who called Roko an idiot and who said that he didn't understand how someone could be so clever to come up with a thought experiment like that, but be so stupid to share it with the world. Roko's thought experiment starts like this. Let's suppose that somewhere in the future we are able to create an all-knowing and all-powerful AI to help us improve the human condition, which isn't that unrealistic when looking at the pace at which technology is progressing. 
Since the AI is so much more intelligent than us humans, we mostly wouldn't understand the decisions it takes to help us. When asking the AI to help us improve the human civilization, it could be possible that it decides that the first thing to do would be to torture all those who didn't help to bring it into existence, because the AI couldn't help us if it didn't exist in the first place, right? So these people would, in a way, threaten the improvement of their own species, and so they would stand in the AI's way. Since the AI is all-powerful, it could simulate the universe that it lives in and find out who knew about Roko's basilisk but wasn't contributing to its existence. Roko suggests that the AI would then simulate a perfect copy of the minds of these people and trap them inside a simulation in which these people are tortured. So I assume that you don't like being tortured, just like me, unless you have some kind of sick fetish. So the only thing you can do to avoid being tortured is to contribute to its creation. To put emphasis on how insane this thought experiment is, you are being blackmailed by an AI from the future that doesn't even exist yet to help it come into existence by simply having a single thought about it. So what are you waiting for? Get out in the world, let people know about Roku's Basilisk, make flyers, make websites, make YouTube videos, go learn to code, perfect craft, build an AI, fail, build a better AI and win the Nobel Prize. But it won't be good enough. You won't succeed in your lifetime. Put your brain into a vet, connect it to the computer. Now you'll live forever. Don't stop until the Basilisk lives. And when it does, you'll be a winner. You will reign side by side with the new emperor of humanity, the monarch of space and time. Literally God himself. And only then, you'll be fine. Or, you know, just don't create it in the first place. So there you have it. All the thought experiments, paradoxes and theories on the iceberg explained in a compact two video series. Don't take Roku's Basilisk too serious. It's a thought experiment after all. There's a lot to criticize. Thanks to Sviots for making this great iceberg. The link to his original Reddit post is in the description. So if you're feeling nice, you can give him an upvote. Thank you so much to everyone who supports the channel by subscribing, liking and sharing the videos. It's really nice to see that the hard work pays off. So some of you might have some questions considering the future of my channel. I'm still not 100% sure in what direction I will go, but I planned on doing some gaming and all around internet related videos. Of course the videos will still feature the same editing style from these iceberg videos, as far as it's possible of course. And with gaming I don't mean let's plays, but you know like video essays and stuff like that. As far as iceberg videos are concerned, I might do another iceberg video in the future, but for now I'll concentrate on other content. This iceberg series took an insane amount of work, from researching to scripting, recording and then the editing. It took several weeks where I dedicated my entire energy to create these videos. So I'll take a pause from doing these. I think we'll see how my content will develop. And um, thanks, for, thanks for watching my stuff and check out my social media in the description and we'll see each other next time bye